November 30 are Telangana elections and I have with me Katie Ramarao who is giving what? Dozens of interviews every day. How do you keep up this interest and look as though you are as agitated, as passionate about what you are saying? Well, I'm not agitated. I'm actually quite relaxed and we're uh, going to win the election. But the good thing is, you know, you're, you know, you're in such a hectic schedule that you forget, uh, you know, counting the dates and counting, uh, you know, you sometimes I even forget that it's Sunday, etc. So, it's a fun ride. I mean, what's life without some thrill, right? It's fun. Okay, what's your day looking like? Because all the time, obviously, you are 24-7 uh, connecting with people and uh, are re elections really the toughest time for a politician? I don't have a word for this in English, but in Telugu we have a word called prahasanam, meaning it's a charade. It's a charade. So therefore, uh, I believe you know people have made up their mind. People actually decide way ahead of time. They know who to vote for, or they've decided rather. So what we go through, all politicians, for the 30 days is uh, something you know where we make complete fools of ourselves, say things that uh, people laugh at, scoff at. So effectively, if you ask me, people have made up their mind. They've already determined, uh, you know, who to elect and who to do, what to what to do, who, you know, what with who. But yeah, we still have to go through the charade and, uh, you know, do what we have to do over 30 days. Spend money, you know, make a fool of ourselves and run around. And, Is know, the entertainment the, become a big part of it? Because obviously you're also entertaining with your politics. That's another matter. But to come up with those quick ones, quick-witted ones... Or do you do have uh, a team also working for you which comes up with some slogans? I wish, I wish. I don't, unfortunately. We did work with Prashant Kishore team for a while, but we're not working with anybody now. So we're just on our own. So what all wit and uh, humor you see, it's all me, thanks to me. So. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, life as a politician is something that uh, you chose, yeah. obviously. You gave up something else to come here. Yeah. Uh, how is your day looking like now, right now? And I would also ask you... Uh, this is all about palace intrigue and what's happening here, what's happening there. As someone who sits in 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 the uh, you know in a center of power, it's very difficult for you to get genuine feedback, isn't it? It is very difficult, but social media helps. In fact, a lot of times social media kind of really acts as a very very nice balancing tool, which gives you direct unadulterated feedback. Of course, abuse as well. But uh, yeah, uh, very very interesting. But now we have agencies which actually give you uh, quite solid feedback as in like survey agencies that give you you know they don't tell you what you want to hear oh they do that's the beauty of uh, that's the beauty of the system that they are very in your face and especially the new age guys who don't believe in uh, you know kind of sucking up to you they actually tell you right onto your face what you don't want to hear in fact my thing has always been that please don't tell me where i'm good at but uh, please tell me what i'm not doing well and uh, that's how i've been and so the reality dose that's much needed for politicians actually is coming in from social media and also from some agencies, which actually is quite welcome. How do you do this? I mean, one day uh, you're giving each other galis and then the next day you have to be most courteous to them, smile at them. Is that what politics is all about? I mean, even if we take examples, if Mr. Punala Lakshmaya or uh, or uh, even Mr. Nagam Janardhan Reddy would say, KCR is the most corrupt. He has, uh, you know, done this in this project, Kaleshwaram project. And the next day you are nice hey, gentlemen with a, each other. Hey, we have a prime minister who called Meghalaya CM the most corrupt CM and then went to his swearing-in ceremony a few days later. So, I think the way to look at this is we are all opponents. You know, where, when we are on the in the opposite camps, sometimes we end up saying things that we probably re kind of regret later. But, uh, you know, such is life. Unfortunately, it's competitive, very competitive field. And, uh, you know, you get both brick bats and also bouquets once in a while. So you have to be prepared for all of this posturing, all of this shouting contests, and then eventually hugging each other and, you know, kind of calling it uh, truce. So, yeah, it's it's interesting. I, I get interesting, intriguing, and I'm sure it's entertaining for people who watch. What do you like best about this, uh, being a politician? Okay. Absolutely, honestly, I think going to the field is my thing. I like interacting with people. I don't like, uh, you know, I don't, I don't enjoy, rather, you know, the... Uh, the day-to-day -day grind of being somebody who has to interact with other politicos. I'd, I'd rather go to field, talk to people, see what kind of change you've affected. On the other end, I also like. I enjoy working um, in policy making, getting things done, making taking some decisions. The two ends I like. In between is what I really don't enjoy, but I have to do. I mean, it's what is it you hate about politics? Mediocrity. A lot of mediocrity. A lot of lot of mediocrity that you have to deal with knowing fully well i mean i'm not saying i'm somebody who's superior or anything but there's a lot of mediocrity which should not be there 
unfortunately it is there in built in grain into the system so yeah you have to deal with it you would uh, think your children should come into politics the way politics is in india today you ask any politician he'll say no even my father did not want me in fact i gate crashed a uh, lot of people don't know the story but i did gate crash in 2006 without telling him i resigned to my post i was uh, actually enjoying a cushy job which me gave me nice salary in dollars i was working for this us firm uh, of whose i was the sales director for south asia i was doing rather well I was getting about 4 4 and a half lakh rupees back then in in rupee terms and uh, yeah it was 20 years ago and had it had i continued probably i would be making a few crores of rupees so yeah once in a while you miss that uh, normal c etc but then this gives you i mean i would be lying if i uh, you know said otherwise this is a privilege this is an honor that has been bestowed on me and thanks largely again i won the genetic lottery of course so i can't uh, also deny that so yeah you should be thankful grateful you know you have to make some adjustments here and there but as sharukh khan would say kuch paane ke liye kuch hona padta hai and i'm happy to so as a politician obviously i always realize that you may not get your family time at all or the things that you love to do what is it that you most miss most about being a politician actually i don't miss much honestly because i drive around in hyderabad by myself and um, i'm quite quite uh, you know normal that way i don't miss much i mean yes of course the time i mean time is a constraint but like they say you know when you have time uh, you don't know what to do with it but when you don't have time you feel like you miss so many things so normalcy is quite underrated that way but uh, but so is so is this whole thing that you know time nahi hai that is also quite overrated har kisi ke paas time hai agar nikalna hai to nikal sakte ho so the thing is people complain just because you know they kind of make it uh, make a make a make a nice uh, show of it but i think i don't miss anything i have my friends i have my family i try and extract some time of course not as much as they would like to but yeah this is the life you said you keep fit fitter than you were before you well actually i'm losing weight not because i'm working out or anything just because i'm probably not eating right that's all there is to it but hopefully i will survive this and we'll also come out of this victorious okay you have a teenage daughter yes and a son as well yes and a teenage son as well who is not with you right now uh do they give you advice political advice and uh, i mean i'm sure they they are proud to see you as uh, who you are uh, doing whatever you are in the state no no they in fact ridicule me quite often they actually talk about uh, what i say and how it ends up being a meme uh, and how how it is used against them so that's not funny for them funny for me but not funny for them um so yeah but no advice as such but they do point out once in a while um and they ask questions you know they say why should this be a certain way like when when somebody body shames or when somebody drags my family into politics they don't like it they are like they are very private people so they don't like it so that becomes a talking point sometimes uh, not a good one for me i am i'm in trouble for that but my daughter you know kind of shows me things uh, you know that people kind are of are they on social media oh yeah oh yeah of course both of them are on insta uh, and my daughter is actually they're quite longer than what she should be so i keep complaining that she should probably you know kind of reduce her screen time like every parent yeah so doses of reality from time to time okay uh the wife is someone who may possibly want you being quite busy no actually <laughs> she she uh you know i told her that uh, when i joined politics i did promise her that there would be vacations and things like that but of course i haven't lived up to that promise not as many as she would like or i would like but unfortunately that's the life we choose so yes in fact 2014 one a secret that i have probably not uh, let out anywhere else i almost called it quits because you know uh, we were supposed to merge into congress and i had decided because congress is a party that i can't see myself in i never could and i never will so uh, but you as a family went to sonia gandhi's house we went to thank her yes i we did and then fortunately for us uh, she uh, did not because of some vagaries of i can explain it at length at, at a later point but this is a fun interview so let's keep it that way no, um, but people are very curious yeah, because yeah. Uh, um, all the time that comes up your photograph with the family I and then sure. that is something that your dad is actually criticized for saying that I you know he went you. and he thanked her and then he uh, betrayed her no there was no betrayal as such he merely asked he merely asked mrs gandhi as to what would happen to the fate of about 60 70 odd um, leaders that he had groomed whether she would be giving them tickets or not she was very non committal she said please talk to digvijay and the mr singh was equally non committal he said pehle aap aa jao baad mein dekhte hain 
and uh, our leader is a man who's you know true to his word because you know people fought with him who sailed with him for 14 years put in their blood sweat and money and everything else into their fortunes and their future he couldn't abandon them just like that so he insisted he said what would happen to them please give me a number as in because congress is a party that is known for not keeping promises so he said he insisted he said please let me know unfortunately they were very very non committal and evasive so and he went and met with mr gandhi rahul gandhi asked him the same question there was no answer so it was not a betrayal of any kind in fact if anything it was the congress which kind of treated mistreated him ill treated him didn't give him the kind of respect he deserved in fact congress was advised by its telangana leadership that in fact the exact words if i have to paraphrase or you know kind of give it to you verbatim unhone ye kaha tha congress ke yahan ke leaderon ne delhi ke leadership se ye kaha tha ki telangana dene ke baad kcr ke ghar ke paas kutta bhi nahi jayega this was the kind of uh, disdain they had unfortunately so as things turn out it is good for telangana people that he is the man who's leading it he is delivered on a number of things and uh, there is no delhi to kind of uh, dictate to us okay uh, we see images of you as the dad uh, or yes. you know with your children and so on but your dad does not seem the typical dad of course he is not on social media to say those uh, things yeah he is definitely not typical he is a man who is unfortunately you know for the last 45 years he is about to turn 17 in february for the last 45 years of his life he is unfortunately uh, you know been a full time politician who eats breathes sleeps talks politics so even when his day starts he's surrounded by politicians even when he's on a dinner table he's surrounded by politicians so we've never had a typical dad son kind of a thing uh, and uh, unfortunately that's the life he chose to live but i try and find some balance at least some semblance of balance and that's one lesson that i've learned from him and i hope uh, yeah, at least my children will not accuse me of uh, being a um, you know what do you call a deadbeat dad okay um finally this is an exam board exam for which you are preparing and somebody else writes the answers on the 30th of november but is it really for any politician the most tense time ever it is tense but the thing is you know i am quite calm and composed because uh, i don't look at politics and uh, you know uh, elections as a life or death battle there are only two outcomes you win or you lose my i i might i might sound arrogant and cocky when i say this but uh, my, in my own case where i run from in sirsila i take it uh, you know uh, take it on, take it in my stride and i tell my people as well i say to this to them that if i win i'll serve if i lose i'll rest and i'll probably get more rest so be it if people don't want me that's fine i i, do, I don't i don't it's actually have... the same language that your dad uses no the thing is in his case he's achieved so much that he can afford to say it and i'm in my case i don't think i should be saying it and my people don't like me saying it but that's my my attitude i i i tell them listen if uh, people want me they'll vote for me if people don't want me they'll keep throw me out any which way so why not you have to be prepared for both outcomes and i am okay best wishes to you then for Thank 30th you. november for Thank the you. hectic days for the politician continues and uh, he combines all kinds of skills to make it happen in hyderabad with camera person nagraju uma sudhir ndtv Hi.